In this lesson, we will learn how to create a block and create an attribute. First, we need to go to the Insert tab, where there will be two main groups we will be working with today. The first is Block Group. Insert Block Button. The tooltip tells us that we can insert a block that was created previously. Next is the Tribute Editor, with which we can edit attributes. Next is Create Block. Let's try to use it. Here's a drop down submenu. We will use Create Block, after which the following dialog window will open, and let's name our block, let it be Block 1. Next, the base point, specify on screen, then objects also, specify on screen, and check scale uniformly. Next, we need to specify the base point, then select objects, and confirm the action by pressing Enter. After which, when selecting this object, we see that we got a ready block, which previously consisted of such primitives, and now it is a single whole. Also, on the properties panel, we can see the name of the block, its rotation, block units, which we should have specified in the dialog window for creating the block. Now let's create an attribute for this block. To avoid getting an error when redefining the block name, let's use the explode command. An attribute is always an addition that carries some text information or other data for the block, that is, it's a tool for linking the block and storing its information. Let's use the creation of attributes and in the next dialog window we can specify tag, prompt, default and also set modes. Let's leave the attribute name as block1. Next is prompt, in which we can give a hint for the next step. Let's indicate that we will need to write the scheme number subsequently. Next, we'll set the mode preset which assigns the default value to the attribute during the block insertion. You can find more information about command and modes and help by pressing down F1 button. After which, we'll leave text settings as default and click OK. After that, we can place the block in any part of it. Since we created the block before the attributes, now let's redefine the block. Let the name remain the same block one. Then we'll specify the insertion base point and once created we will see the default text we have set and we can also set it via the function panel. Let's write that this is scheme one confirm the actions. Now we can see that the block has an attribute. Also, to redefine block attributes, you can call the sync command or click the synchronize button. If needed, we can uncheck the attribute mode, that is, make it invisible, and then it will not be displayed on the drawing. We can see it only on the functional panel. Let's try to do this with the next block. Create attribute block 2. Next is prompt, indicate skim. Let the attribute be invisible. We'll set this attribute and create block block 2. Here we leave everything as it was before, now specify the base point. And now, after entering attribute skim 2. We won't see it on the drawing but this attribute will be set for this block. Also, we can go to the attribute manager by double-clicking the left mouse button on one of the blocks. Here we can specify the attribute value. Basically, the main parameters found in attribute tab are not editable. In text options and properties tabs, we can configure text parameters and set properties accordingly. Let's replace skim1 with, for example, attribute1. Apply. OK. We see that the name of attribute has changed. Let's create the last block. At first, let's create an attribute and remove the invisible and preset checkboxes and then create a block. Specify the base point. The block attribute editor opened. And now we see the prompt indicate scheme displayed, which we specified in previous cases, but created the block differently. Now, we create it as it should be. This will be scheme 3. 
and now we have a block that already has the attribute we wrote at the block creation stage, and each of the attributes has its base point. Also, if after all the work done with the blocks you want to clear the drawing of these blocks, it will not be enough to simply delete them. We can go through the NanoCAD button. Utilities. Purge, after which select blocks and from this list delete all blocks. This concludes our lesson.